Hey everybody, this is Joel with Brutally Delicious. It is ridiculously cold here in Ohio. Winter winds slicing through our fucking bones over here. I hope you're all staying warm wherever you're located this holiday season. Today I'm here to chat about some of my <clears throat> favorite albums of 2022 and <clears throat> take a cue from the one and only Dark Basic. I'm going to split this list into several parts beginning with some of the more mainstream stuff. Uh, honestly, though, there weren't many mainstream releases this year that spun my head around. I'm really glad Amon Amarth and Lamb of God are still making records. I think people gave too much love to Ghost and not nearly enough to Slipknot. And as a lifelong fan of Megadeth, I will defend Dave Mustaine's riff-pissing genius until I breathe no more. But none of those albums went the distance for me. They just didn't. One that did, however, was Blind Guardians, The God Machine. That's right. It took this legendary German power metal quartet 12 albums in three decades to make a lasting impression on me, but man, did they ever deliver here. I've always found Blind Guardian and power metal in general to have a bit of a plastic sound that gets absolutely crushed under the weight of the subject matter. <laughs> But that is not the case here at all. What can I say? Uh, they got the balance right with this one. Masterful shit. Next, how about some hometown love? Two Toledo bands went out of their way to kick my ass entirely up, down, and sideways. And I couldn't be more proud. I'm talking about Mutilatred with their cannibal caveman death metal juggernaut Determined to Rot, which came out on Redefining Darkness Records this spring. And in the Glass City Doom Department, we've got Pythian with Understanding and Light. And I'm telling you, if slow-churning, mud-pit, riff-worshipping, sludge-like Doom is your thing, do not put off checking this bastard out. Moving on to progressive metal, a lot to choose from uh, there this year, but I want to highlight Woe by An Abstract Illusion. A little bit of something for everybody on this one, though. It does lean more towards death metal, a brilliant record that I've listened to many times. But no other progressive album did more for me this year than Starlight and Ash by Oceans of Slumber. One of the best bands on the planet right now, I think. And Cami Gilbert it has the strongest voice in metal. I, I'm just going to say that. She's a force to be reckoned with indeed. Death metal was unstoppable in 2022. So many great albums I could list 20 equally ferocious death metal records from the second half of the year alone but overall i'm going to pick nether heaven by revocation a band that can do no wrong in my opinion dave davison is a goddamn monster on guitar he's just unstoppable i love all revocation albums and like black dahlia murder i think they're an excellent gateway band for anybody interested in dipping their toes into the death metal waters but for sheer crushing old school barbarity Absolutely nothing can touch Seraphic Punishment by Fargo, North Dakota band Maul. Another Redefining Darkness Records release. And holy shit, what a great band to see live. Do not underestimate this album. Moving on to Doom. I'm going to go with Aphonic Threnody's The Loneliest Walk. This thing is massive. It's over two hours long. Ten songs. The longest of which is 24 minutes. Just over 24 minutes. And it's not an easy listen. It's heavy, heavy, beautiful, and devastating funeral doom. Ricardo Veronese is an incredible composer, guitarist, and just an all-around good dude. Uh, and Funeral doom isn't everyone's cup of tea, understandably. So, But I don't think there's a better example of it than The Loneliest Walk. It is a Phonic Threnody's crowning achievement. Okay, now, now's the big moment. This is, this is the album of the year for me. Kardashev, Liminal Right, No Contest. The impact this album had on me throughout the year is impossible to quantify. Kardashev calls their music Death Gaze, which, as you might have guessed, suggests they're a little bit death metal, a little bit shoegaze, and I wouldn't exactly argue with that. Uh, definitely is both of those things, and there are unquestionable moments of deathcore in there, peppered in there. But the atmosphere they were able to create takes all these elements and paints this 
hauntingly gorgeous and utterly devastating portrait of a man who's suffering from the early stages of dementia. And he's trying to come to grips with the fact that he will soon forget everyone he's ever loved. And uh, it's, it's just a masterpiece. It's a flawless work of art from start to finish. And if I don't stop talking about it right now, I'm going to fucking cry. Okay? So that's it. Those are my picks. I hope you find something to enjoy in there somewhere. And I hope you've all had an excellent holiday season. Looking forward to more heaviness in 2023. Everybody take care. All right, cheers. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. <laughs>